Hello, Business 330 students. This is Professor Hassey. It's our uh, supplement video for week number four for our cat class scheduled January 27th. And due to a family health issue, I was unable to have class. So I want to go over a few things for you today. Uh, today is Friday, uh, January 29th. It's a little bit after two o'clock in the afternoon, and it's raining here in Claremont. But I wanna just go over a couple of things with this video and then set the tone for our introduction video next week and our class next week uh, in on, on February 3rd. Uh, tonight, uh, we're going to talk about um, our uh, quiz, uh, or excuse me, our assignment number one, go over that a little bit. All the grades have been posted. We'll talk a little bit about the discussion post that you need to uh, complete for Tuesday as a great as your graded work this week and give you a little bit of preliminary input for what you need to prepare for class for next Wednesday. So let's begin. So if you go to your Blackboard site, you'll see a, a couple of different things have changed since the last time we met. First of all, in the assignments and final examination file folder, you'll see the solution file to uh, assignment number one with uh, my interpretation of the answers for those questions of which I returned your file to you in your grade center. And you can review that along with your posted grade. And you can see your cumulative course average after 20% of your course grade has been completed thus far uh, in our class. If you have any questions about that, please be sure to let me know or come to the office hours, student hours uh, on our Zoom or uh, ask me next week in class. Be happy to explain anything that uh, you don't understand. Uh, <clears throat> assignment number one uh, was a, a on the first four chapters of our class, a definition of finance, an introduction to finance, uh, a review of financial statements and financial statement analysis. You know, as, as I said, you'll see the grades in your grade center and uh, you can download your, uh, your work uh, to review. And here is that solution file. Uh, the points uh, given each problem are mentioned in the problem. For example, the first question is worth 10 points and so on. And I'm looking for a couple of key points. I know a lot of us wrote different interpretations and in your own personal interpretation, which was great. I, I appreciate that. I appreciate the independence of your answers. But also I was looking for a couple of key components that, that I was that I based my grade of your work on. And if you note it in the in your return file, either in highlighted in red, I, excuse, me, excuse me, highlighted in yellow or highlighted in green are areas that I was concerned about. Or or also uh, in, in red uh, typing, uh, I explained uh, what you got wrong and the amount of points that were taken off for that work. So uh, first question was, what are the goals of financial management? I was basically looking for the goal of financial management is to maximize corporate value, specifically maximize shareholder value. Anything in your explanation of that to, to that goal was sufficient. Question number two, also worth 10 points. What are the functions of the financial markets? Financial markets allow us uh, to provide uh, functions of providing uh, transportation or movement of money over, over different areas, bank accounts, brokerage accounts, transfer risk, provide liquidity, allow for greater diversification. In other words, the financial markets provide a vehicle to purchase and sell financial instruments. Financial instruments can be anything from real estate to stock, to bonds, to bank accounts, to money market funds, to ETF, to options, to stocks. And as you all know from the activities of this past week in the stock market, uh, derivatives, uh, options, short calls, all kinds of stuff which made the news this week in that uh, handling of game shop and uh, AMC theaters. Quite the interesting week in Wall Street. And we'll talk more about that when we take a look at our portfolio question for this week. Question number three is, uh, what are the two major decisions that are made <coughs> by financial managers? And they basically are two. Uh, the investment uh, or capital budgeting decision, where do I make we make the investment in what assets and how are we going to finance 
that investment? Where is the money going to come from? Those are the two major decisions, investment and financing. Question number four, the multiple choice questions are five points. Select the best answer. Which of the following groups is least likely to be considered a stakeholder of the firm? First of all, before we can answer that, we have to understand what do we mean by stakeholder? Stakeholder means somebody that has some type of form of an investment or some type of return or distribution of returns off uh, the, the company. And the, the least uh, answer for this, the least likely would be competitors. I would think you would not want to share your returns and your growth with your competitors. The government, yes, you pay taxes. Bondholders, you pay interest and pay the money back to the bondholders. Employees, you pay them a salary. You're, you're, they're part of your company. That's their stakeholder, they're all stakeholders. Competitors are not stakeholders. They don't, unless uh, your competitors own you, uh, which then it wouldn't be a competitor, you'd be on the same side. Uh, so the answer is C on this question, competitors. Select the best answer, cost of capital, A, B, C, or D. Matter of fact, in this one, I was, uh, you know, took a little bit of look at the problem because I, I took this problem <laughs> out of the textbook. And uh, my choice of the answer is D, for risky investments normally higher than the firm's borrowing rate. In other words, it's riskier, so the cost is higher than your, your regular credit-based rate. But every answer is sufficient in this question. A, B, C, and D are both viable answers. And if you answered in any one of those four, you got the problem uh, correct. Uh, in my mind, D is the best answer, but really when I took a look at it, every one of the four are good definitions of the cost of capital. And we'll be talking about that in particular next week. Question number six, select the best answer. Which of the following is information that is not provided by the financial markets? The financial markets being banks, being the stock markets, commodity indexes. Microsoft earnings in 2002, could be in 2020, 2021. Microsoft provides that information to the financial markets, but the financial markets do not give the information for Microsoft earnings. It comes from Microsoft price of gold, the cost of borrowing, the cost of wiring, all are generated by those vehicles in the financial markets that provide those market services, the selling of gold, the borrowing of money, the wiring of money. But Microsoft earnings is not provided by the financial markets, it's provided by Microsoft. That's the correct answer. And in question seven, a lot of people had a difficult time with this problem. Uh, that's why it's only, fortunately, it's only worth 10 points. But I gave you the financial information of a company and then you had to put it together into a financial statement format to tell us what is the earnings before interest and taxes, what is the net income, and what are the cash flow from operations. Remember the cash flow from operations is one of the three areas of the cash flow statement. Remember the cash flow statement, cash flow from operations, investing, financing. Cash flow from operation is, is basically the short-term capital management of the company. So putting all this information together into a financial statement and providing our earnings before interest and taxes, net income and cash flow from operations, you have to decipher where each one of these information items go to. $500,000 of sales, that's revenue. $10,000 of cash dividends. Cash dividends is not an expense of a company. It's cash flow from financing. It's paying your investors a dividend. It's cash flow going out. So cash dividends, $10,000 has nothing to do with this problem. $300,000 cost of goods sold. That's an expense, part of the income statement. $20,000 administrative expense, expense, income statement. 
$20,000 depreciation expense, expense income statement. But also if you look at our work of last week or two weeks ago, depreciation also is cash flow for operations. It's cash coming in because it's an expense on your income statement without writing a check. So it's considered cash flow, a source of capital, a source of cash for your operations. And that helps us determine the cash flow from operations of this company. $40,000 interest expense. That's an expense on the income statement below earnings before interest and taxes. $10,000 purchase of productive equipment. That's the purchase of an asset. That is not an expense. And it's the purchase of an asset that is called cash flow from investing. Investing in new products, new equipment, investing. So that $10,000 purchase of productive equipment has nothing to do with our work in question number seven. Then it tells us that there's no changes in working capital, which will help us in the cash flow from operations. Remember, working capital is current liabilities and current assets. And the company's tax rate is 35%. So putting that all together, we have earnings before interest and taxes of the first answer, $160,000. Right there, 160. Oops, there we go, 160. Revenue, sales, minus expenses, 160,000. From that, we subtract out our interest expense of 40,000. And now we get $120,000 of earnings before taxes. That $120,000 thus then is we have to take 35%. 35% of 120,000 is $42,000 which is our income taxes for the year. Subtract 42,000 from the earnings before interest and taxes and interest expense, we get our net income or bottom line and the second answer of the problem, $78,000. Two answers solved. And then as I've been saying all along, our cash flow from operations is the cash flow. The def definition of cash flow from operation is net income plus depreciation, and then plus or minus sources and uses of working capital. Well, we know that the net income is $78,000. We know that the depreciation expense is $20,000. And we know that there's no changes in working capital. So our op cash flow from operation is the net income, 78,000, plus the depreciation, which is added back in as a source of cash. So our third answer is $98,000. $160,000, and $98,000 is our answers for this. You'll never see this problem again in our class, not even in the final examination, but it does, uh, it, I will be asking you throughout the class of looking at financial data. You did that also in questions eight, nine, and 10 in this assignment looking at financial da data and understanding what is the information and what does it tell you and how to interpret that information in a particular way. And question seven was a good uh, test of that. Question number eight, again, 10 points. <clears throat> what are our standard measures of firms leverage, liquidity, efficiency, and profitability? This is from chapter four defining the major indexes or the major rules of financial analysis. A firm's leverage is a statement of their debt. A firm's liquidity is how much cash flow is driven, driven out of the company. Efficiency is how they're managing their assets or debts. Profitability, how much profit are they making in relationship to sales, in relationship to assets, in relationship to equity. Different ways of looking at a company's financial position. Chapter nine, define profit and loss statement, what it does to tell you about a firm, who uses it and why is it important. Select one company and tell us how this works. 
Well, a lot of you did very well in this. You just selected one company, a defined income statement, but some of you forgot to tell me the company you selected. I didn't know what company you had. I took, I took some points off for that. Same in question 10. What is the earnings per share for the last three years of a company? It's the net income divided by the number of shares of stock outstanding, or you can get these this information readily easy from most of financial data inf inst instruments like we talked about in the uh, Dun & Bradstreet uh, uh, Hoover's database. Uh, many of you did very well on this, but again, some of us forgot to tell me what company you were talking about. So the data didn't mean anything to me because I didn't know which company it represented. So make sure you do that in, in future work. And in question number 11, again, same company, give me for the last two fiscal years, current ratio, which is current assets divided by current liabilities, debt ratio, total debt as a percentage of total assets, profit margin, net income divided by revenue or sales, and return on total assets, which is net income divided by total assets, and briefly explain those definitions in relationship to the data that you provided for your company. And that's our assignment. All in all, everybody did a great job. We just missed on a couple of the uh, little details, but it was a great opening work uh, to our uh, study and I uh, congratulate you all. So again, all that information is provided in Blackboard. Uh, if you have specific questions about how I graded it or uh, about the work, please feel free to contact me via, via, uh, via our variety of uh, resources, text, email, uh, Zoom, uh, student hours, or in, even in class uh, next Wednesday night. You have a uh, graded work to do this week. It's due Tuesday evening, uh, February 2nd prior to class, class next Wednesday. And it's in your student discussion area. It's to reevaluate your portfolio. It's to update, <coughs> excuse me, update your spreadsheet uh, to uh, the week ended today, Friday. And the market has now closed for about an hour and a half. Uh, today on Friday, January 10th, 29th, update your portfolio, uh, determine its stock prices, update the three indexes, which took a little bit of a hit this week. Matter of fact, all of our portfolios took a little bit of a hit this week. And what is the percentage change in your total portfolio and indexes from the original valuation? How in percentages has your portfolio changed? And also a something new, I'd like you to create a new column, call it beta. This is gonna be part of our discussion on Wednesday night of next class on chapter six and seven. Uh, what is the beta, which is a mathematical standard deviation regression analysis of the risk of a particular company in relationship to the overall market. And I want you to find the beta for your company. And uh, that beta is located in Yahoo Finance, right on the summary sheet of any company. Uh, some companies might not have beta, but it'll tell you if it's not available. Uh, and then uh, we'll discuss that beta in our class next week. This work is due, remember, it's in spreadsheet format. You post it to this forum after you do your update of your portfolio. Here's my portfolio, so you can see it as of the close of the market today. This is my portfolio as of this very minute. I have updated it, and this is what I expect you all to do uh, for this next week. Uh, naturally, here's my original $100,000 investment on January 8th with the number of shares determined by dividing the price on January 8th into the amount of my investment, and I rounded to the nearest whole dollar. Here's the Dow, S&P 500, and NASDAQ uh, indexes as of January 8th, which is a look at the overall market. And you've noticed in the last three weeks, I've had definitions of these three indexes. Uh, for you to get to know them if you've taken a look at those definitions in our Blackboard weekly information. Well, then the market closed today at one o'clock on January 29th. And as you can see, Professor Hassey took a little hit these first few weeks or the month of January, uh, but not as bad as the market. I did better than the market. My Apple stock went down. My <clears throat> 
Uh, Intel stock has gone up. There's a good one there. Uh, there's Viva Systems and Clean Harbors all took it a little bit rough. Total, I lost uh, $578.34 in these first month of January of my portfolio. That 578.34 translates into a negative 0.58% drop from $100,000 to $99,421.66. Notice the Dow dropped 3.5%. The S&P 500, almost 3%, and the NASDAQ, about 1%. So I outperformed the markets. Even though I did lose money, I didn't do bad as the overall markets in Dow Jones top 30, S&P top 500, and the NASDAQ ended index of 2,500 leading companies in America. So yes, I lost money, but I didn't do as much as bad as the overall market. So I pat myself on the back for that one. And then notice here the beta. The beta is I just went into Yahoo Finance to the summary page in Yahoo Finance of these companies and it gave me my current beta index, Apple 1.28, Intel 0.73, 0.83 is Viva, 1.72 is Clean Harbors. The higher the number, the less, the greater the risk of the investment. The higher the beta, the greater the risk. It means the deviation from the average of the market returns is higher. The lower the beta, the less risky that investment is over the past four years. This is a beta index of historical return over 16 rolling quarters. That's four years. We don't have to worry about the calculation. That'll make your head spin unless some of you in statistics might have done this. But I, the beta will tell us a lot about the risk of the stock in the market. And we'll talk specifically about this this coming next two weeks in chapters six, seven, eight, and nine of our reading. We'll talk about that in class next week. So find the beta of your portfolio as of January 29th. And usually this is done quarterly, sometimes monthly for some companies, but usually quarterly. <laughs> So I'm going to be looking for that in your spreadsheet. So this is what you should be turning into me this coming week in Excel or Mac numbers or Google Sheets with your in your discussion forum, a view of your original portfolio and now an update, taking those original shares and updating them to the latest share price as of the close of business today. And you can see, oh, Professor Hassey, you lost money. You think you're so smart. Yes, but I didn't do as bad as the markets. <laughs> so I like to see this and how you performed with your selections to the market for this first month of January. And everybody probably lost some money this month uh, because of the wackiness of the what's going on with the markets now. We'll talk more about that in our class on Wednesday. But that's what's your graded work for this week is due Tuesday night, February 2nd at 9 p.m. But you probably could knock this out this weekend because the market is now closed. You can get your closing averages and do this work. Don't forget spreadsheet format. Okay, heading into class on this coming Wednesday, February 3rd. Uh, I'm going to be doing a few things. Now, um, as I said, indicated by uh, the unfortunate I had to cancel class this week, we're going to be trying to be making up some from some of our work over the next couple of weeks, and uh, I think we can do that very easily. Uh, we're going to be going over these problems in Chapter 5 in class, 4, 11, 13, 19, and 38, on these pages of your textbook. Uh, it's doing a spreadsheet. The, uh, the problems are already posted to Blackboard, but I want to go over them verbally uh, in front of you uh, to go over these. These are all examples of the time value of money, present value, future value, annuities, amortization. So we're we'll going over those in class next Wednesday. So if you want to get a head start and look at those, please feel free to do so. We also are going to look at uh, chapter six, which is about bonds. Uh, in the corporate financial word, world, bonds is the major form of debt instruments to borrow money. 
The reason for that is, is corporation needs need a lot of money, a lot of capital, hundreds of millions of dollars. And most banks cannot lend corporations that kind of money. They can only lend the amount of money to their capital reserves. And then they're limited by one or two major players of those capital reserves. They can't lend all their money out to one company. And if that company gets in trouble, the bank will be in trouble. Just ask the housing market about that about uh, 12 years ago. But be that as it may, uh, bonds is a way of uh, getting one major issue of debt, hundreds of millions of dollars. If a company had to go get a hundred, hundreds of millions of dollars in the market from banks, they'd have to put together deals of five, six, seven, eight, nine banks put together deals. With a bond instrument, they can borrow in one number, one instrument to the markets. They're selling their stock to the public. Excuse me. They're selling their debt to the public, to insurance companies, to pension funds, to mutual funds, to hedge funds, to individual people like us. They're selling their bonds, just like stock in the market. So we're going to be looking at the definition of bonds. Bonds are an indicator of a, of a firm's leverage, how much debt they have. The credit rating is determining their interest rates or coupon rates of their debt. And that's bonds, very important part of corporate finance. Individuals like you and I, small businesses, proprietorships, partnerships cannot issue bonds. It has to be major size companies with lots of assets to be used as collateral to go out and get that kind of money in the public markets. Most partnerships, sole proprietorships, you and I, where do we get our financing from? Banks, banks, car loans, mortgages, credit cards, lines of credit. Corporations have lines of credit, but only for the short-term management of their companies, like providing enough working capital. But the major debt of corporations comes from bonds, and we'll be talking about that in chapter six. The next major part of financing is something we all are going to be familiar with, especially with our portfolios, is stocks, the issuance of equity in companies. And we'll be looking at these problems on these pages, defining stock and how to measure stock valuation. What do we mean by dividend yield? What do we mean by determining the cost of equity? What do we mean by the cost of debt? These are all going to be discussed in chapters six and seven, the two major forms of acquiring capital. Unless you're fortunate enough to be Apple Computer or Amazon and, and Google and have huge profits, you don't need to issue new stock. You don't need to borrow too much money. Most companies are not in that position. Their major form of growth and investment is in bond markets and stock markets. And we'll be talking all about those from chapter six and seven next week. That'll lead us into assignment number two, which will be posted next uh, for Wednesday, February 3rd on chapters five, six, and seven. And that'll be due on Tuesday, February 9th. We'll also begin our discussions of capital budgeting, capital investment, in chapters eight and nine. All right, once we decide to, once we know where we can borrow our money, once we know where we can get capital from the issuance of equity like stocks, where do we invest our money? Where, what assets do we invest in? Well, the answer to that question is, just like you did in question number one of assignment number one, we invest in assets that's going to maximize our return, our value. How do we go about doing that? It's called capital budgeting. And that discussion is beginning in chapters eight and nine, which is our reading uh, at the beginning of week five, six next week in two weeks. So that's where we are right now. Uh, brush up and look over your assignment number one. If you had any questions, remember the assignments are practice for the examinations uh, at the end of the class. And also the assignments help us do the project paper which we're only a couple of weeks away from getting uh, in our class. So these assignments prep you for future material in our class. So if there's some problems, if you don't understand, I'd be more than happy to review them in class or on an individual basis, however you see fit. All right. So we now have 20% of our class completed grade-wise. 
We're now heading into the fifth or halfway point of our class, if you can believe it, week five. And we're going to be talking about bonds and stocks and the investment of capital and how to best manage that in the corporate financial world. Update your portfolios this week, post the spreadsheet to a Blackboard discussion folder. Uh, there's no writing involved in this. So you, all you have to do is just give me the new data of your portfolio in relationship to the markets by Tuesday night next week at 9 p.m. If you have any questions, I'm available all weekend and into next week. Uh, thank you for your patience this past week, and I look forward to seeing you all next Wednesday evening, but look for my introduction video about Wednesday's topics on Monday. Have a great weekend, everybody. Be well and wear your mask. Adiós.